Hello, hello, hello. Everybody, this is the decentralized future of natural medicines. Natural medicines being a euphemism for psychedelics. Thank you so much to uh, Brittany for organizing this panel. Thank you to Gitcoin and all the sponsors. Uh, yeah, Gitcoin. Thank you to the mushrooms themselves. Indeed. And thank you to all the medicine carriers that came before us, the names that we know and the names that we don't. I'm Riley Capps. I am a drugs reporter for Double Blind Magazine and a DAO contributor. I'm here with Duffy and Sovereign. Sovereign. <laughs> They are from the Society for Psychedelic Outreach, Reform, and Education, which is a community, a nonprofit, and advocacy group around natural medicines. We have Valinda Jones, who is a scientist and Dow contributor. And we have Travis, who is the, the best mushroom grower in the universe and probably the multiverse. So I'm stoked for this panel, The Decentralized Future of Natural Medicines. And I want to start with Sovereign. Sovereign. Hello. So why is, the, why is decentralization of natural medicines important culturally, philosophically, in our bodies, in our lives? Can you speak to that? Yeah, let, let's talk about it. Hi, everybody. Um, Let's talk about power, you know, the history of power, the history of the systems that we, we live in, we're ruled by. They have, they have certain things in common. And as someone who's worked in many ecosystems from, from public health to land back to queer movements to now the psychedelic space, they have a lot of similarities. And I think we have to be willing to name some of these similarities. Um, and I tend to do a very good job at naming them, you know, patriarchy, white supremacy, you know, colonization, these things that we have inherited, all of us, you know, not just some of us, but all of us have inherited this legacy. And it, it produces particular results. And so, all right. And so that might have um, been my microphone. Sorry. Okay, word. And so, de decentralized decentralizing this movement and and psychedelics and this space gives an opportunity for a di a different a a different path, a path that's not taken, a path where indigenous wisdom is held and and is held sacred, um, a, a vision where you know. Black folks and other folks of color are centered, their experiences are centered. And, you know, they're not, instead of them being kind of left and then the story around like, why can't, like, why, what's wrong with like this population? Why can't, why are they feeling left out? It's like starting from the beginning and centralizing them gives an opportunity for not only them to, and or us to, um, to, to have voice, to have power in this space, but I feel like it gives an opportunity for a lot of healing to take place where, you know, because it's not a business as usual system, by inverting it, we're creating an opportunity for healing and a different approach. Yeah, we had centralization of the DEA that doesn't get more centralized than people in prison. That's a right. very centralized system. Right. And people have been in prison for a long time for growing a fungus. It's a very strange thing. And Trav was one of the main guys, people, that brought forth the decrim movement in Denver. And Trav talks to mushrooms more than anybody I know and listens to mushrooms and inhabits the mushrooms. How did the mushrooms help you to lead the decrim movement here in Denver? So I've been working with, with the mushrooms for 28 years now. And for the first 24 years that I interacted with them, I definitely thought of them as a drug. And then I realized that you could go to them intentionally and they were a medicine. 
And about that time that I was kind of in that, in that place in my relationship with them, I often said that I worked for the mushrooms. And during the campaign, um, a lot of my experience around cultivation and a lot of my psychedelic insights became very useful in how to encourage people to do vision work, how to own, in, like, uh, organize in a mycelial way to kind of look at multiple points of inoculation and yeah, just take a lot of the, the morphology and the, the insights and use them in real time and recognize, uh, does everybody know what biomimicry is? So biomimicry is this this thing where we look to nature because nature has already done the research and development on how to thrive in this environment. So really going there to, to kind of look at organizational structures and how to delegate responsibility and how to um, decenter, decentralize authority. And you won. We won. We won. And now mushrooms are not a crime in Colorado. You can grow them, you can gift them, and it's a wonderful freedom that you and a lot of people on this stage gave to us. And I would really love to give a round of applause to the people that decriminalized mushrooms in Denver. A lot of things came out of that. Now some 17 places have more freedoms around psychedelics, from Oregon to Washington, D.C. And in Denver, one of the things that came out of it was the Society for Psychedelic Outreach, Reform, and Education. And you have Duffy. You've been at the head of that. And this year, in 2022, there was a thing on the ballot to create this state-run clinic around uh, mushrooms. And you actually opposed that bill. And you're still working to, with the legislatures to, to put it more in the hands of the people. Can you talk about that, why you oppose that, and what the work is that you're doing right now? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so it's a little bit more complex than uh, we just opposed that ballot initiative it was. Um, so Colorado voted on Proposition 122, the Natural Medicine Health Act, in November. Um, we've, we created a coalition during the advent of that ballot initiative, which was the creation of a stakeholder group. It was a lot of corporate cats, uh, all white men. I think there was one white lady. Um, a lot of people from cannabis, not a representation of community, not a representation of people who should not just be included, but who should be leading these conversations at all. So we went the mycelial route and undermined a little bit. And we got into this space to make sure that there was some sort of vehicle for community influence in the crafting of that language to make impacts on the process to slow it down. Largely, uh, a, a large portion of the My Coalition, which was made up of many different people, some people who went on to join the steering committee of of the campaign. Some people went on to form a different, an entirely different ballot initiative that was just focused on decriminalization. Um, but a large contingency of the My Coalition just wanted to slow it down. We need more time to build community, to build trust, to create community-led policy reform, which we need that with this movement. The psychedelic renaissance is way too industrially, corporately driven. We need community-led policy reform because plant and mushroom medicine power should be to the people, it's folk medicine. So we were able to make a huge impact on the language. The reason why the personal use section of Proposition 122 is as robust as it is, is because of the work that we did. Travis was a part of that. So many other people were a part of that. So I wanna give thanks to all of them. Um, and now we're, it, it passed, uh, Spore, myself specifically wrote an op-ed it was in the Denver Post and then we wrote a big open letter attached to that that gave the fullest analysis I feel no not patting myself but the other pat myself 
that, that there was, uh, as far as just a full deep analysis of the policy itself, and it was just to really inform people as best as we could about some of the key concerns around this vote and why, you know, if you're a psychedelic advocate, you should still have questions and concerns how things are rolling out. Reform and change for the sake of change is not necessarily a good thing. We have to understand intentions, impacts, interests, who's actually driving this, where does power go, who benefits the most, who gets to control this. It matters. Um, so now it's passed. There's been a lot of peace waging since. We're currently working with people who were proponents of the campaign. The My Coalition is back in action and flourishing. We've got fruiting bodies um, with a lot of different parts of this ecosystem that are starting to flourish that the My Coalition wants to support as basically a decentralized mycelial approach to coalition building, to community organizing. We would love to have all the space in the world to just really focus on that, getting our community down. But now that this initiative has passed, what happens with any ballot initiative is it goes into implementation. So the legislators are now drafting bills to implement the new law. And what community advocated for so strongly to have no limits to personal use, the, the need for no numeric limits for communal and personal protections is so key because if you have numeric limits, even if they're super high, even if it's like 300 grams of psilocybin. And that's, that because it's psilocybin, that's illegal, right? It's not the mushroom. So that's, that's, that would be a super high amount if, if like say 300 grams were decriminalized. But what that does, if you have any sort of numeric limit, is it gives police discretion to, to say, I have to weigh that. I can't look at that and eyeball that and know how much psilocybin is in these mushrooms. So why we fought so hard to make sure the personal use section had no numeric limits is because what we're actually fighting for is no police discretion and discrimination in being able to enforce anything outside of personal use, sharing, cultivation, all of that is protected in the new law. Sale of medicine is explicitly not protected. So, you know, organized commercial trafficking and all that, all that's still illegal, but for us to have our communal personal ability to share medicine, to grow as much medicine as we want, to provide for our communities, that's what we're fighting for. But currently the president of the Senate, who I'm a constituent of, he's in Boulder, Colorado, I recently moved there coincidentally, which is turning out to be convenient. Um, he is introducing a bill um, and and before I go into it, and I'm about to wrap it up, before I go into to him and intentions there, he seems to be a potential ally. We want to build good relationships with reps. They represent people. So th these aren't necessarily corporate ca cats or anything like that. They're just, they're representatives and we need to educate them. So um, mostly he's concerned about um, like large scale organized commercialization and like an underground market and like cart mushroom cartels and shit like that. Um, there's also parts of the law that he need that needs to be moved out of Dora because the way that the policy written and how the campaign was um, run in a lot of ways was just kind of messy and haphazard. So. I think that what's the big takeaway for this room is if you're interest, if you care about the decentralization of medicine and making sure that the priority is community and community stewardship and our personal sovereignty and communal sovereignty to develop our own relationships with medicine and that it shouldn't just be concentrated to institutions and controlled by the state, <clears throat> that putting commercialization over community is not a good thing. Currently, in this bill that's coming up, it's very likely, almost 100% chance, that they are going to introduce numeric limits of some kind to the bill. That would change the law. That would put, that would put us in that situation that I just outlined where police have discretion now. So, not to be a downer, we may, this, there's significant change happening. The people's movement in Colorado is extremely strong and it's just getting started. 
and the fact that this conference is happening here in Colorado and you know like this this is a crypto conference but we need to find intersectional ways to build power there's so much to crypto blockchain DAOs that can really support people's movements and us creating solidarity economies right now here in Colorado is there there's a there's actual legal space to do that and to experiment with some of this stuff. And there's a need for people to do it and to join forces to protect what's happening here because what's happening in Colorado will set the trajectory for this entire movement. So that's it for me. Thanks, Duffy. Um, Valinda, you are a scientist. You grow mushrooms, you educate on mushrooms, and you do DAOs, and you do decentralized science. How do you think these two worlds can intersect? How can psychedelics and blockchain Web3 come together to support these movements? Of course. Hi, you guys. I'm Val. Um, for example, um, you see that right now everything is kind of inefficient because right now it's pushing towards corporate interests. So for us to be incubating and being a mycelial network, we can gain feedback and we can basically propagate and expand efficiently and actually fund things more efficiently to actually push forward the movement, to actually um, expand it to multiple people across the whole entire nation. And as a DAO, we're using experimental systems to um, you know, demantelize our current broken system. And we're currently doing that in an underground net, but we can also rise up into a fruit body and do it in a much more efficient way using crypto, using um, tools to vote on things on a collective level. And being um, a huge advocate and being in the industry, I feel like I can actually make an impact um, in the industry on new ideals and new systems on how to decriminalize the movement before we move too fast into legalizing things. So yeah, I mean, that's a little snippet of what I would say, but yeah. We don't have much time left, but um, what else is alive for anyone on the panel? But you really want to get out there. Oh, I'm, yeah. I should mention yeah, Sidow as Sidow, well. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I should mention Sidow. So Sidow is essentially um, basically an incubator for giving out grants for people who are er, researching psychedelics and, and expanding mental health resources. So, for example, if we, if, for example, if SPOR or the My Coalition were to submit a proposal to, um, if they submit a proposal to SIDAO, we can essentially fund that directly and they can use the funds to, um, you know, push forward their movement in a very efficient way without having any like obstacles. And we believe that their organization can move in a self-sovereign way to make that happen successfully. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about the possibilities of Web3 to track reputation so that people can know who their guides are, where they're getting their medicine. We can have feedback. It can be kept on chain, the, the important information of who's safe, who's holding a good container, who grows quality medicine and who doesn't in a way that is actually safer than what the state is putting up, putting together because there'll be more information. It'll be more community led. And, and I just think it's super exciting. So we, in the unregulated space, we will always be able to achieve higher standards and better outcomes because we are going to maintain tribalism with working with the medicine in a way that the pay to play systems will not be able to. That when you work with a therapist, there's rules of engagement that that therapist cannot take you on as a friend or a, a, a tribe member. And these medicines are medicines of connection among so many other things, but I really believe that, that they will never be able to achieve the same outcomes and there will be a glass ceiling that people will, will reach healing in these containers and eventually they will have to go to the, the deregulated space to actually heal from that indoctrination. Uh. Please, 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 let us not repeat history. Like, I think we know how a lot of the art movements have gone. Like, this space, you know, decentralizing, like, 
please experiment with what that means for you and yourself. Um, and as you do that work within yourself, you'll be able to see where that is needed in others. And, you know, together we can, we can really do something great here. And I just pray that we, we do that. Um, it's so easy to repeat history or do what we've always done because the system rewards that. It rewards that behavior, right? So like, I'm just, my request is for us to get a little messy, a little disorganized, fall apart a little bit, but I promise you so much, there's so much on the other side of that. And so that's just my hope for all of us. So, um, ooh, yeah. Um, one thing I immediately think of when I think of decentralized decentralization is is shifting power. It's decentralizing uh, power, authority, identity, um, and I think what's really hopeful about what's happening with psychedelics is you know a lot of the mainstream narrative of the psychedelic renaissance, which is I call the Renaissance kind of like the mainstream movement at this point. Um, it's around healing. It's around um, how psychedelics can help treat mental health issues and different um, d diseases and pathologies that are within the construct of a hyper individualized society that looks at people and whatever their like affliction is, is like, this is something we need to treat so that you can be, you know, more normal. Um, and there's that Krishnamurti quote that to be well adjusted to a profoundly sick society is no measure of health. And so I think what we really, what we really need to be careful of is like, while the mainstreaming and the access increase to psychedelics is is something that is, is hopeful to many. The set and setting thing that maybe most people here have heard of is like the, the context, the mindset and the environment that people go into medicine journeys with being like critically important to the outcomes of that experience. We have to expand that to, to include culture and our community context in set and setting because we could absolutely be reinforcing patterns of oppression, concentrating power, extracting more. If we're gonna really understand what's needed to, to heal, like we have to understand that we're part of a collective body and that our healing like our liberation is bound up in each other's. And so we need to shift power in order to heal. We actually need to address we have to compost systems and, and culture and dominant culture patterns in our own individual healing journey because it's, we're not separate. I am because you are. If psychedelics aren't helping us all see that, something's up. If people are like going into experiences and coming back being like, oh, I have the message from God and I'm here to heal everyone and I have the whole ass vision locked down and you're going to fit right into it perfectly. Let's not do that. We have to people in their cultural literacy and rev relevance within their communities can only people in communities can know what they need to heal. And we need to support each other in being able to do that. So that's it. Thanks, Duffy. Um, I hope that crypto and psychedelics in both of these spaces, everyone believes that they're going to change the world. If you're in crypto and you're building cool things, come find these people help them build their communities. I want to thank them so much. Sovereign, Travis, Belinda, Duffy. I'm Riley. This has been the decentralized future of natural medicine. Thank you so much for showing up. Thank you to everybody.